basically we're, we're trying to understand where do uh, moral principles come from, and including some, some uh, more focusing more specifically on some well-known moral principles that philosophers have talked about for a while and that ordinary people seem to adhere to, at least implicitly in, in, in their judgments. Um, trying to understand where they come from, and by understanding where they come from, can we get a sense of how wise it is to rely on principles like this? Well, this, this, this position is drawing on an old, uh, and so at least to philosophers, well-known moral principle. I'm going to talk about two of them. The first one is, is the one behind, uh, behind that statement, which is known as the action-omission distinction. And the idea is that actively causing harm is worse than causing harm passively through inaction. Another one which I'm only going to mention in passing is the mean side effect distinction. So a classic example of this is in, in wartime, if you, uh, if you were to bomb uh, civilians working at a factory in order to shut down the factory that's making munitions, that's killing these people as a means, uh, and that's supposed to be very, very bad, beyond the pale, that's uh, you know, killing, killing uh, that's terrorism, that's uh, kill, killing civilians. Um, whereas if you bomb uh, a factory that's empty, but you know that there are civilians around who will be killed, then that's killing them as a side effect. And people think this is an important distinction as well. I'm not gonna, for, for today's talk, I'm just going to talk about the action omission distinction. Um, so here's the, the basic research plan. Um, Experiments 1A and 1B, they originally one experiment, we've since divided them into two, is about this question. Where do these moral distinctions come from cognitively? And what, is, what is the psychological basis for, for our drawing these moral distinctions? And then experiment two is, uh, how do these distinctions become moral principles, and what role do these principles play in moral judgment? So the hypothesis is this. We know, that moral, we know that when it comes to moral judgments, people say that harmful actions are worse than harmful omissions, and the hypothesis is this. That the reason why we say that harmful actions are worse than harmful omissions has to do with the way that we think about causation. That we actually think of, in, in, in a more general way, that's not specific to morality, we think of actions as being more causal than omissions. And so it's this more general feature of how we think about causation between agents and, 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 the, and the events that uh, depend counterfactually on their behavior it's this more general cognitive feature that then has this particular influence in the moral domain. And what we're doing is we're trying to first identify brain regions that are sensitive to the action omission distinction uh, in non-moral context when people are making causal judgments. So you say, how much did this person cause this event? Where we're not talking about anything that's particularly moral, but it might vary in terms of whether it's active or passive. What brain regions are representing, is this active or, or is this more or less causal, depending on whether it's more or less active. And the payoff ideally comes this way. So we measure the sensitivity of these very same neural regions and of these particular individuals to, uh, to, to the action omission distinction when they're making moral judgments. In other words, does the neural activity in these causal brain regions, and I, that's an oversimplification, but an easy way to talk about it, does neural activity in these causal brain regions predict people's moral judgments. So we identify these brain regions in a morally neutral way that has to do with causation, and then look and see if it affects the moral, what's going on in those brain regions affects the judgments that they make. This is, this is the, 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 the interesting result that we were hoping for. Uh, again, very small number of subjects. The question is, does an individual's sensitivity to the causal distinction predict the individual's tendency to draw the action omission distinction when they're making moral judgments? If you just look at the omissions cases, which is really where more of the variability is, even with just 10 subjects, this, this, the correlation is really quite strong and it's already significant. So in other words, it does seem that the fact that someone is sensitive to the action omission distinction in this non-moral domain where they're making causal judgments predicts whether or not they're going to draw the action omission distinction like the American Medical Association in the moral domain. Does activity in these brain regions that were identified by asking questions about flowers and things like that actually predict, does it correlate with people's moral judgment? And the answer is so far, in at least one brain region in this network that we've identified, that's the case. And we may see more as we get more data and more effects can, can, can come over threshold. But the key result here is that this brain region, among others, was identified in this non-moral way, uh, but, but actually predicts moral judgment. The more general issue here is take you know, as a special case study the action omission principle. Is this a wise principle and can science tell us anything about uh, how we ought to think about the wisdom of this principle? Uh, what this result suggests, again these results suggest in a very preliminary way, is that this moral tendency is actually based on a much more general cognitive tendency to think of actions as more causal than omissions. 
Are our bioethical and other medical practices being directed by quirks in our causal cognition? Of course, a lot of work is in this you know, uh, question is being done by the word quirks. What's a quirk and what's not? Um, but that's the basic idea that, that by understanding where these principles come from, we may have some reason to doubt about whether or not we want to rely on them. I don't think it, 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 it makes the case by any means conclusive.